So the Cleveland Browns just lost to the New York Jets. Hey, how about the New York Jets? They're the hottest team in football right now. Uh, but I actually don't think this is a huge deal for Cleveland. I'm going to break down. I'm going to break down the end of this play, really the last sequence, not even the final drive, because I find it interesting. This is what I want to talk about. And then I'll say why I don't really think it's a huge deal that the uh, Browns ended up losing this one. But yeah, so for this final sequence, I'm actually not entirely sure what happened on this first play. Uh, I know that's not a great start to a breakdown, but it looks like it's zone coverage of some sort. And I think someone just got their... Uh, coverage confused someone screwed up it looks like one of those two players that I have sort of uh you know aligned towards where they're supposed to be covering that circle to Mayfield's right uh they're not going to do that that's going to somehow end up wide open so I think someone just blew their coverage not 100% sure it's hard to tell sometimes on these types of plays especially when you don't have all 22 what I do know however is there is going to be a giant bubble uh that Mayfield can make this throw to and I also know Mayfield's going to make this read very quickly watch how he quickly sees that that's open is able to hit Bryant and Bryant just drops it and you know that just can't happen and it's interesting because obviously the Browns had no receivers so that's a huge issue definitely a major factor why they lost but it also felt like their tight ends just had some opportunities where they could have made plays and didn't so you know that's one of them and you do want to make that play so that's that's tough I think Brown's haters are going to argue, well, you know, hey, you still have, that's a starting player and he was the one who screwed it up. So you can't completely exonerate them. But Brown's fans are going to say, if we had our starting wide receivers, we would have been throwing to Jarvis Landry instead, who almost definitely would have caught it. So, uh, you know, that's not great, but still second down and 10, not the end of the world. So at second down and 10, it's going to be a cover two man. I like this coverage for the New York Jets. It's it's funny. I do feel like I've liked a lot of how their defense has been coached once Greg Williams has, has left. I do think they're a much better team without him, uh, even though I believe, if I remember correctly, they lost 40 to three immediately after uh, kind of sh goes to show how bad they were with Greg Williams. But yeah, cover two man and for Cleveland, they have a route that can work against this coverage. It's usually better against cover one because with two safeties, someone could break in and, you know, it's the go route on the sideline. There definitely is an opportunity for a safety to run over and try and make the play. For Cleveland, it's going to be Jamarcus Bradley who's going to try and make the play who had 60 receiving yards in this one. Again, no, uh, no, none of your top receivers. You got to throw it to some other guys. Meanwhile, for the Jets, the safety who's going to end up being the key guy here is Mathis Fairley. So those are the two key players on this play. Mayfield takes the snap. He is going to fire in that direction because it can work. And as you see, there is a window where he can make this throw. And you just can't help but think on a play like this, what could have of Ben if this was Jarvis Landry trying to make this. I mean, no disrespect to any of the Browns players who played in this game, but Landry is the kind of guy who he is your go-to guy in these situations. He can make those contested catches and not having him out there, it, it, it just did. It hurt them down the stretch. Not to make too much excuses, they still have an opportunity here, but unfortunately, as you know, it's not going to work out. I thought Fairley did a good job of finishing. It was still a catchable ball, to be honest. It was a good throw from Mayfield. It really was. If he throws a lower, that could have been knocked away by the other defensive back. So I think that's a good throw, just good defensive play. And again, uh, it's not a bad offensive play, but it could have been a little better. And, you know, if Landry was there, it probably would have been better. So now we have this one. It's a third down and 10. They know it's man coverage. They send a man in motion. So Cleveland, aware it's man coverage. It's going to be a cover one man play. And you see the route on your screen. That's the best route against this type of coverage, really. Uh, you have a, a, you know, a tight end, which honestly, in these situations, throwing to tight ends seems to be better than throwing to wide receivers just because, again, the, the COVID protocol things. It's also Austin Hooper, who was the leading receiver in this game with 71 yards. And again, makes sense. He is a good receiving tight end. So I understand the logic here. And it's a good route against this type of coverage. So this makes sense for Mayfield to want to throw to totally 100%. Mayfield takes the snap, he looks over, and he makes this throw, Hooper gets open, and at this point, if Hooper can just twist his body and fall forward past the first down, then it's a first down, obviously. Now, uh, you know, only one timeout left, so they probably have to burn the timeout, but that's totally fine. You just want to get the first down here, avoid a fourth down scenario at all costs. That's typically the mindset. However, he's tied up, and I want to give some credit to Fairley, too, again, being able to run back and just not allow Hooper to twist past the first down. I'm not, I'm not sure if that would have mattered, but still good hustle. Jets 
definitely uh, fighting for every inch, despite the fact that they went into this game 1-13. Pretty crazy. So now let's show the quarterback sneak. I'm going to pause it right here. I feel so confident that if Baker Mayfield holds on to this football, they get the first down right here. I mean, all he has to do is fall forward. Quarterback sneaks are ridiculously difficult to stop. They just are. So you even have Kareem Hunt running in from behind. He's trying to just push Mayfield forward. I feel like they're going to end up getting it here. I do. But the issue is you see Mayfield, he's sort of against his own offensive lineman, and the ball is in an awkward spot because he can't put both hands on it since he's against his own offensive lineman. His left arm's kind of tied up, and he can only hold it with one arm, and that one arm is right next to uh, his uh, offensive lineman right here. So really what's going to happen is you look at 93 for the Jets. That's Terrell Basham, and I mean, he's the guy who's going to make this play. He bumps into Mayfield, the ball pops out, and then the play is over. Uh, base, the play is basically over at this point. Uh, well, I'll say this. There is no way that the Browns can get the first down the second that ball popped out. Why? Well, it's a little bit complicated. So the rule states that in the final two minutes of the game or on a fourth down, if the, a player fumbles the football, then only he can re recover it and continue running forward. So in this instance, Kareem Hunt recovered the football but that doesn't matter because Mayfield was the one who fumbled it. So Hunt recovers it. So they still keep possession. Uh, if it wasn't a fourth down, they would still keep possession, but they can't re move it any more yards. Now, this seems like a bit of a weird rule, right? Because why would this be a thing? You know, why not just make it a rule that you can't, you know, intentionally fumble forward? That seems like a much more obvious rule. And that is true. Uh, but what's interesting is that where this rule originated from, this rule originated from the, the the then Oakland Raiders. Yes, once again, the Raiders are screwing over the Browns this season. They did it by beating the Browns earlier. They screwed over the Browns by losing to the Dolphins yesterday, and now they're doing it again with something that happened back when Ken Stabler was quarterback. Watch, it was this play. It's called the Holy Roller. You're going to see that Stabler's going down, and he like clearly just yeets the ball forward, and then another teammate does that, and so they end up scoring a touchdown like, at the very end of the game, and that's what happened. And so the NFL said, okay, we got to make this a rule that you can't do, even though, you know, it's clearly just an illegal forward pass. So the refs were just dumb on in this instant. But back then, clearly they felt like they needed a new rule. So they decided to make it a rule that on certain situations, you can't recover someone else's fumble. And now the Browns are getting screwed. It's a stupid rule. They should just make it. You can't uh, fumble forward. You know, you can't maybe you can't recover a forward fumble. I don't hate that. Uh, totally, or something like that. There's a better way to do this. Uh, clearly, the NFL, I do not think, has the best way, and it screws over the Browns. So yeah, that's not the whole reason the Browns lost. I might make a video on sort of breaking it down into more detail. I just kind of wanted to talk about the ending, though, because I thought the ending was very interesting. But also, my last thought I want to talk about with Cleveland is that, yeah, I don't think this is that big of a deal. I really don't. Why don't I think it's that big of a deal? Be I mean, obviously, it sucks that they lost. They could have gotten into the playoffs of a win but I think that the Colts losing actually really uh, makes you feel a lot better if you're a Browns fan because they still control their own destiny week 17 and they play the Pittsburgh Steelers who will probably be resting their starters now that they have the division locked up so you have a good situation week 17 just win and you're in it's far from a disaster and this game was just a weird game I mean they had no receivers they had uh, multiple linebackers missing. They had multiple offensive linemen missing, uh, including Wyatt Teller, who's probably been their best lineman when healthy this season, and that's saying something with their great uh, line. So uh, I just think that this is a... It was such a weird game. I'm not going to freak out. And the Jets do have... You know, they're an NFL team. Everyone likes to talk about how bad they are. They are an NFL team, and they're playing... They, they, Playing good football the past two weeks, beating a couple of double-digit win teams. Well, at least they probably will be at the end of the season. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it's not a disaster, I don't think, for the Browns. Obviously, it sucks, but it could be a lot worse. All you have to do, win week 17 and you're in. That's what you realistically probably thought you were going to have to do next week anyways. So now you just know it uh, again. Would have been nice for them to clinch, but not the end of the world. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.